Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain how to test and diagnose fuel rail pressure sensor on this GDI engine uh, when there is P0191 fuel rail pressure sensor fault code. So for this fault code, we're going to need to check the connector on fuel rail pressure sensor first. And then we need to go for testing the wiring on the fuel pressure sensor. For the sensor itself, on the workshop manual, we don't have any uh, resistance measurement. So we need to focus only on the uh, wiring. So as you see over here, on this connector, we have three wires, uh, brown, pink, and red. So based on the wiring diagram that you can see on the screen right now, starting from here, this is pin number one. Uh, red wire, which is the power supply. Number two is the pink wire which is the signal from the sensor back to the ECM. And number three, the brown wire is actually the ground. So for checking the sensor wiring, as I said earlier, there is no resistance inspection for the sensor itself. On this car, disconnect the connector. So what I can do, I can check the voltage between each one of them and the body ground. Ignition switch must be on. I grab my multimeter, I put it on the voltage. Red one should go here, I'm checking the power supply and the black one on the body ground. So I should get 5 volt in this case. This 5 volt is coming from the ECM. If you are getting 5 volt, it means your power supply is okay. And the second one, the signal, I'm checking the voltage right now on the signal, on the middle wire and the body ground. Again, I should get 5 volt in this case. And the last one, of course, is the body ground. There shouldn't be any voltage over here, as you see. It's just millivolt is nothing. There is another step for checking the ground as well. I need to select the resistance. You can go for the continuity function at the same time. You, you can hear the continuity sound and you can read the value as well. So right now, connector is disconnected from here. Uh, these two, one end on the ground, on the brown wire, and the other one on the ground. As you see, I'm hearing the continuity sound and the resistance is very low, confirming that this wire is connected to the ground without having any problem. If, the, if your measurement is exactly within the range, it means there is nothing wrong uh, on the wiring, most likely the problem is from the sensor itself. You have to replace the sensor. But if the value is not okay, you have to go back on ECM side because when your measurement on this connector is not okay, the problem could be the wiring from here to the ECM or ECM itself. That's why you need to go on the ECM side to take the measurement over there as well. So in this step, I'm going to show you how to check the wiring, how to find the wires on ECM side and how to check the wires one by one then you can come to a conclusion if ECM is faulty or the wiring. As you see on the screen, pin number one on the rail pressure sensor, the red wire uh, was actually the power supply, which comes to pin number 15 uh, on e triple G AK connector on ECM, but as you see, the color is already changed. The color of the wire was red, uh, rail pressure sensor side, but on PCM side is already turned to uh, blue. Let's locate the pin first, pin number 15. Uh, here you can see E triple G AK connector and we are looking for the pin number 15. So this is the connector that we are after. If you check the connector here, I have number seven. Uh, so if you count, it's gonna be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. This is actually pin number 15. You can back probe it as well, but this uh, props that I'm using, they are really thin. They're not going to damage the female pins as well. Because normally if you back prop, you're going to damage some part of the wiring as well. So I have already found this one on my multimeter. I'm going to select resistance. You can go for the continuity as well because at the same time you can hear the continuity sound and you can read the resistance too. On my multimeter, I have two props. One prop is going to be here. The other prop is going to go uh, on the red wire on the rail pressure sensor. This is a better view. I have my pin right here and I leave the multimeter just right there. So one 
end of my multimeter here on the pin that we already found and the other end is going to go to touch the uh, positive on rail pressure sensor wiring. So as you see, I'm here the continuity sound. It means there is no open circuit and the resistance is less than one ohm. It means it's okay. There is no higher resistance as well. I can do very same thing for signal pin number 27 on the same connector. So you see the pin number 27 on the screen right now. So for finding that, it's actually on the second row. As you see, so I look at here. The first one here is actually pin number 24. So I'm going to go 24, 25, 26, 27. This is my signal. And let's check it between ECM and rail pressure sensor. One end of my multimeter here on ECM side and the other end on uh, signal wire of rail pressure sensor. Again, as you see, I'm here in the continuity sound and the resistance is less than one ohm, which shows no open circuit and no high resistance. And the last one is ground. Uh, pin number 10, as you see. Again, it's on the first row. So the green wire is just this one. As you remember, this is 7, 8, 9, 10. This green wire over here, this is the, this is the ground. Okay, so I can find it from here as well. This is 7, 8, 9, 10. I insert the prop, and if I check for the resistance and continuity, one end of multimeter here, the other end on the ground side of the rail pressure sensor. All right, it's working just fine. There is no open circuit and there is no high resistance. So basically this was how you guys can check the uh, rail pressure sensor wiring between the sensor and ECM. If your measurement on the rail pressure sensor side was not exactly within the range because generally you take the measurement on sensor side if all the measurements are okay the problem could be coming from the rail pressure sensor if there is any measurement out of the spec as I showed you just now you need to check the wiring between the rail pressure sensor and ECM to figure out if the problem is exactly from the wiring if you have open circuit high resistance but if the problem is not from the wiring as well it could be coming from the ECM and now let's see how we can test the rail pressure uh, with the scan tool I have already connected my scan tool ignition switch is on scan tool is reading the car as you see scan tool is reading my car Kia Rio 2012 also as you see car has GDI 1.6 engine. On system selection, I'm going to go for engine. Now let's go for data stream. So on data stream, I'm going to go for these items. Actual engine speed filtered rail pressure rail value and fuel rail pressure sensor voltage so i'm going to start the engine so as you see here is the engine rpm i have the rail pressure value over here rail pressure sensor voltage and this is a set point for the fuel rail pressure as you see engine is running at idle it's just trying to reach to the idle because i just started the engine the rpm is a little high engine is trying to uh keep the rail pressure set at 40 bar and as you see it's almost 40 uh, bars so when you are checking the gdi system with the scan tool uh, you're gonna need to make sure when engine is running at idle the pressure over here is 40 bar so when you see the pressure over here is not at 40 bar it's at 4.5 bar it means that uh, high pressure system is not working at all of course in case of failure if the high pressure system is not working the low pressure still is going to start the engine and you can drive the car but you shouldn't expect that much power that you were getting with the high pressure pump 
as you see engine rpm is dropping to no more right now but still we have 40 bar it means that ecm is receiving a signal from fuel rail pressure sensor and is actually controlling the fuel pressure regulator valve so this one is actually confirming the fuel rail pressure sensor operation and this one is confirming the fuel pressure regulator valve operation as well which should be at 40 bar and of course when you are driving at maximum load this one is going to go up to uh, 140 150 bar so for example when i'm accelerating you see the pressure is going to go high when i release the gas pedal it's going to go back to normal which is 40 bar thank you very much guys for watching